Hello everyone, my name is Sarah, and today I'm going to be showing you how I turned this G.G. Grant Monster High doll into Susie from Deltarune, the first chapter. She has some fantastic body sculpting and a wonderful chest tattoo, but sadly the tattoo will have to come off. The first thing I did, as per usual, was to tie back her hair and cut it off. This hair is still in great condition, so I saved it for wig making in the future. Then I soaked her head in hot, hot, hot water until the vinyl was soft and more malleable. protecting my hand with a washcloth, I tugged her head off of the net peg bit by bit to keep those pointy bits from breaking. Then it was time to remove all of the hair plugs and glue from inside her head. Many doll customizers like tweezers for this, but I actually don't have any and I like the way pliers work, so why change it? Then I removed the face makeup using Q-tips soaked in acetone-based nail polish remover. In the end, it took six Q-tips to remove all of her paint. I would like to come up with a method that requires less waste. Maybe a cloth? The next part was sculpting her face. The actual sculpt that the artist gave her is beautiful, and I was kind of sad to be covering it up. Maybe I'll find another Gigi someday and be able to keep all of these details that I love. Back to the clay. I'm using DOS Air Dry Clay again, and I'm liking it less than I did the first time around, but it still does work. And I did my best to smooth the clay to the edges of the vinyl, but it wasn't perfect. And honestly, I knew it wasn't gonna be. So here's her head sculpted. You can see her lips, nostrils, and even a few teeth. Not too shabby for my first real sculpting attempt, if I do say so myself. Then I took a Dremel tool that's actually been made for nail care that I bought at Rite Aid and used it to smooth the nail dried clay. Between that and using a nail file, I got it pretty smooth. However, there was a new problem. The clay did not want to stick to the plastic, so, I preemptively popped it off entirely and super glued it to her face, which worked, but it made all the sanding I did at the join kind of pointless. I should have let it dry before adding my first coat of paint, but I was impatient. This led to me getting super glue all over the end of a brush when I painted her nostrils. Then I started working on her face. First, I outlined her eyes with some watercolor pencils. This is a tool I don't use often, mainly because mine suck, and I do have a technique that works fairly well without them, but I wanted to give it a go anyways. Then I started in on the sclera with watered down acrylics. Adding water to your acrylics is really helpful in keeping the paint from clumping and streaking, but I have a bad habit of adding too much water. This time was no different, and I struggled at first. The only part of this face-up that remained in the end were these eyes, ironically enough. You can 
also see the first pastel run here, but since that gets redone, I didn't include its footage. As you can see, when putting the head back on the body, the acrylic paint detached from the vinyl and the snout piece even detached a bit on the edges. So much for my thorough glue job. In the end, I decided the face-up wasn't really salvageable, and I started it over. Once I had repainted her, color matching the paint to the plastic much better this time, I redid her shading with chalk pastels. I tried to keep her simple to match the game's simple style and, and the Rosé doll's form. I used blues and purples to create what depth I did add. While I pastel, I want to talk about her eyes some more. In some artwork, Susie has yellow irises, but I decided to keep it black and white. I chose that for two reasons. One, the yellow eyes only seem to show up when she's angry, and I want Susie to be happy. Also, I wanted her eyes to look cohesive with Ralsei's, since they're part of a set. I gave her slitted pupils like a crocodile. She reminds me of a dinosaur, so I wanted to give her bird eyes, since birds descended from dinosaurs, but they just looked off. So alligator eyes it was. I used some eggplant colored 100% acrylic yarn that I've had for at least 10 years to make her hair. I wound off lengths twice as long as I wanted her hair to be. Then I looped them onto a chopstick from takeout. I save all my chopsticks now. They're invaluable to me for doll making. Yes, I wash them first if they're used. Then I brushed out the hair. First with my ancient American Girl doll travel brush and then with a comb. I don't have a flat iron, so I used one for clothes on a low heat setting to straighten the hair. For the wefts, I decided to experiment using two different types of glue. The top weft is Elmer's Craft Bond. It's for fabric and paper. It also dries clear, is launderable, and acid free. The other is just regular old Elmer's school glue. So you would think the choice would be pretty clear, but the Craft Bond is stickier longer and leaves little flipping pills everywhere that are hard to get out of dull hair. It doesn't seep through the wefts to the other side well, although the school glue is worse about that. Then I realized I had made her hair in the wrong color. So I had to brush out more yarn and make more wefts. This time I mixed the two glues, but that didn't really make a noticeable difference. It was still just meh. It was finally time to add the hair. I did that following Mozekito's wig with fringe or bangs tutorial, just minus the wig cap. I glued the wefts straight to her scalp. And this is the best hair that I've ever done. Who knew? 
Following the guidance of someone more experienced could be so beneficial. Cutting her bangs was tricky because I didn't have any hair styling scissors and this time there isn't a convenient hat to hide any mistakes. They turned out perfectly disheveled in the end though. I didn't trim anything else because I wanted Susie's hair to have an overgrown, unkempt look. I don't think she gets regular haircuts, you know? Now it was time to make her outfit. First were her shoes. I made them loosely following Walker Colors tutorial and my own experience making Rossi's hooves. The paper mache cast was tricky. I think I added too much water to the glue mixture and it was running up slash down her legs, depending on how you look at it. And I was worried about it getting into her hair. So I covered her in a washcloth and put her in the most ladylike of positions. Then it was time to free her from the casts. They didn't stick to the foil layer though. I kind of thought they would. Then I cut off a little extra of the cast so that they could be slipped on and off without straining the clay. I was originally planning to make them out of more DOS clay, but it would not cooperate. So rather quickly, I switched to some very hard but still usable polymer clay. After they were baked, I removed enough of the paper that it wasn't noticeable from the outside. Next, I painted the soles using a mix of orange and metallic gold acrylic paint. You don't get to see it, but I also painted the boots a very dark gray and glossed them. Then I cut up some old denim from a ripped pair of jeans and made inserts to glue into the open area on the back of the boots. This would hopefully keep the boots on her legs while being more flexible than clay. It would also work to hide her pants and legs that would have otherwise been exposed. is her outfit. I dug through my collection of Monster High clothes to find some suitable pieces to create patterns from, a la Delightful. Surprisingly, it was easy to find exactly what I needed. I simply seam ripped each piece, noting their construction as I did, and then ironed them. overcoat couldn't be ironed, obviously, so I held the pieces over a pot of boiling water, using the steam to soften the plastic just a bit. 
I laid them out flat on some baking paper, placed a washcloth on top, and smushed them flat with one of my girlfriend's law textbooks. I sewed all of the clothes together using a combination of hand sewing and machine sewing, but apparently I filmed none of it. For the trims on her coat, I tried dyeing some bias tape the same way I did with the yarn for Ralsei's scarf, but it didn't work as well. So I found some fabric markers in a drawer that my mom had given me and used them to darken the fabric instead. I quickly painted and glossed her belt buckle that I'd made out of air dry clay and sewed a belt out of a folded black ribbon. Her armbands flummoxed me for a bit. Eventually, I decided on using trimmed ribbon that I had sealed the rough edges of using a candle. The fabric or ribbon needs to be synthetic for this to work because cotton or wool will just char and crumble. If you do this, be careful not to burn yourself and not to catch the ribbon on fire like I did my first try. To make the spikes, I daubed the craft glue onto the cuffs and left it to dry in the spike shape the nozzle gave it. Once dry, I painted them with more of the metallic gold orange paint. had to make her an axe, like she has in the combat sequences, I first cut and carved the basic shape into some foam that had been in with a package. It wasn't as stiff as I would have liked it, but it worked and kept the weight of the weapon down a bit. It's still pretty heavy though. I added clay to refine the shape and then ultimately carved away at it with an X-Acto knife to get the perfect shape. I decided to paper mache it because the clay was kind of crumbly and it needed a smoother finish than I could get just from sanding. So I covered all but where the handle would be inserted, which gave me the look I wanted. The clay of course soaked up the water and glue, which might have made it stronger, but I ended up having to wait days for it to dry again. For the colors, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Silver and blue metallic paint seemed to be the obvious route but I didn't have any and Target is a 30 to 40 minute bus ride each way and Walmart is even further away. So I went back to Rite Aid and found some metallic markers. Skeptical as I was, I got them. I hate having to buy new things for my dolls. I have a lot of craft supplies that I have accumulated over time and I want to be as eco-friendly with my art as possible. But hopefully I will be getting a lot of use out of this set of markers in the future. with a coat of varnish to blur the streakiness, it was perfect. The staff part was next. I mixed up a purple paint and used a shortened chopstick for that. I gave it a few coats to make sure the color was evenly distributed as well as some varnish. For a grip, I dug out some faux leather cording and chose some blue to wrap around one end. It's a nice touch, I think, despite not being canon exactly. I created a slit in the open end of the axe head and slipped the pole into it. I could have glued it, but I'm still not 100% sold on this axe head. If I can find a way to make a lighter version of it in the future, I will and replace it. Time to get dressed. Here you finally get to see the clothes. They're all made out of my other favorite doll customizing supply. Old t-shirt material. That and chopsticks will get you far.
that moment when you can't find the hands even though you just had them and they were right here. I really love how Susie turned out. I think she's definitely a jump in skill for me, although she's far from perfect. I'll let you in on a secret. She's my favorite character, and I'm so glad that I could do her justice. Chris will be the next doll video you'll see from me probably in a month or so. In the meantime, be sure to like and subscribe so that you can check out all my other arty and nerdy videos. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a joyful day. Bye!